come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. We're a movie review and talk show podcast that comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not, in our quest for total world domination. Hey, you, yes, you can help us out with that by going over to wherever you found us and hit that like or subscribe button. All of that stuff helps us get found by other like-minded folks like you, and we would really, really appreciate it because then we become the fastest growing podcast in the universe these on, on this plane in hell everywhere mm. <laughs> all across all dimensions all yeah dimensions the multiverse yeah yes. the multiverse yes well let's introduce these people who are talking to you they're the internet radio superstars holly michaela sean and i'm colin and tonight we watched the movie that was chosen by sean what did we watch and where did we go tonight <laughs> yeah. we well we watched it's the spooky season, everybody. It is spooky season. We're getting into yeah. the spooky season. And what's spookier season? than being dragged to hell? That's yeah. right. That's pretty spooky. It's so we watched. Spooky is, as spooky as you can get. Really, I mean, I would really, say so. Really. So we watched Sam Raimi's Drag Me to Hell. Mm-hmm. Good choice. What year? 2009. That's a yeah. late entry in the. Uh, yeah. From the, the decade that we're, we're honing in on is the second golden age of horror. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yes. Would this be an entry in that gold, second golden age? I well, think we'll so. find out. Well, maybe, yeah, we'll, we'll get to it. Okay. Mm hmm. Um, all right, so Sam Raimi, obviously, he's a... He's coming uh, off of Spider-Man. For this Spider-Man. One. Which one? Three. Three. Three yeah, saying. don't... You gotta specify. Yeah, specify. Because there's a big drop off in quality there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> well, he's a, a Hall of Fame, Saturday Night Freak Show Hall of Fame alumni because he was uh, previously did what? Intruder? He was, he was in, in Intruder. Intruder. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we did Evil Dead. Yep, we also the original. Did Dark Man. Yes, we did. Oh, my Dark favorite. Man. So yeah, Dark go. Man's great. Dark Man's All right. Great. Well, I mean, you can't do a show like this and not have Sam Raimi as an alumni, I suppose. Right. So I mean, definitely not. That's right. His I'm just glad we're not in, like, we didn't put three Spider-Mans on the board to get him in. I mean? <laughs> I, I think I, I don't think I could are. do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think we that can, would break me. We could do part three. I was going to say, we could do three. terrifying, isn't it? I'm just, like, when you said that, I was picturing us watching all three back-to-back, like, three weeks straight of Sam Raimi Spider-Man, and that would break me. All right. We've seen all the Halloweens. I mean, why not Spider-Man? Yeah. Well, all right. There's don't a difference tempt, there. Don't uh, tempt Kyle or Sean with that. Don't. Yeah, don't, I yeah. got Short Circuit 2 in the pipe. You keep oh, talking boy. like that. I'm okay with that. Um, <laughs> I'd rather do that than another Halloween, Sean. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, well here's the uh, uh, truth is coming out. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> that's fine. Um, so, uh, obviously, Sam Raimi is a big name in the horror genre because primarily he directed Evil Dead Evil Dead 2 and then Army of Darkness, which yeah. isn't really a horror movie. No. No, it, that's like a fantasy movie. Yeah. Yeah, but the Evil Dead 2 is like the movie that all the 80s kids saw in slumber sleep, sleepovers and stuff like that. It's yes. a it's a titan in the genre. Um, There's a few wait, things I, I, in this I, movie I, that I was just, right in. And I have an Evil Dead 2 question for you guys. Oh. I, I'm of the opinion that I, I think it's better than the first it's one. I like it. Yeah, but sometimes some people, that's a controversial opinion. Well, but so, only one. Only only yeah. like they are. I think when even when we were talking about it on the show, it was the first one is like a horror movie. Right. And the second one is a horror comedy and i yeah. think that's where like your your people who are like i like horror movies say evil dead but i think it's very amateurish it's cool because it was made by 23 year old kids right. yeah. but i think later the remake which is produced that by them is basically them going like okay we can do this as like a real right. movie but yeah. that you know? first one is kind of unintentionally funny that first oh, one yeah. is not as people say it's a horror movie it's got a lot of comedic elements it does. That first which one are still too. like shut up two. linda like <laughs> yeah. that's a joke you know yeah. Well, yeah, and i think they took all that stuff and like mm-hmm. part two is evil dead on cocaine yeah like yeah. it's just whew, the All three thrashed. stooges, I guess. Yeah, basically. Been like that. Yes. Yeah. But like pace wise, it's so much more watchable. Yeah. Mm. So much more. Yeah. I, just, it, I, I like how, how much it escalates things. Yes. Yeah, so, exactly. Mm-hmm. And it remakes the first one basically in the mm-hmm. first like 20 minutes yeah. or whatever. So right. you really yeah. only need Evil Dead 2. And then Army of Darkness is like him trying to do like a Ray Harryhausen movie or something that's like that. That's a studio movie too. Like, mm. Yeah, that's why there's three different cuts of it. Yeah. Well, and that's what, recently when I saw Bruce Campbell do the drive in thing last summer, he said, he's like, I only made one studio movie in my life, and that was Army of Darkness, and it didn't do well. And like, mm. then, like, then he moves on from talking about it. Like, that's, that's <laughs> it the end of it. It didn't do well. Yeah. I remember that one. Uh, but I mean, it has like a cult following where that and Big Trouble in Little China seem to be like from that. 
those couple years, right. like everyone seemed to have seen those movies. Yeah, and like, they don't even, even know that it's connected to Evil Dead. No, right, no, right. Army right. Of just people fans. who yeah. love Army of Darkness. Yeah. So like, yeah. oh, there's other, yeah, yeah. yeah. other. <laughs> okay, I feel yeah. like like I heard of Army of Darkness before I heard of any other. Like growing up, I heard of that mm-hmm. before I heard of any Probably. other Evil Dead, Bruce mm-hmm. Campbell. Like that was my cornerstone for Bruce Campbell. Yeah. And it yeah. sucks because that's the best cosplay to do of Ash is Army yeah. of Darkness. It's yeah. like it's like my least favorite movie, but the best version of the cosplay because you, yeah. you get the ripped open shirt and the chainsaw hands and right. the belts. Like it's the best look. It's iconic. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Which is ironic. I think that the uh, the Ash versus Evil Dead TV show didn't have the rights to Army of Darkness. Yeah, so they have to kind of skip over. Yeah, <laughs> too bad. Right. The movie. Yeah, they never mention it. Mm-hmm. I now that you say that, Colin, they've never mentioned yeah, it. Yeah, because wow. we have canon rights. divergence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they touch on everything else that's ever happened to that character. That's the yeah. thing. Like, yeah, wow. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. Well, th- I know that uh, Sam Raimi, like uh, you know, for being such a, a titan in in horror, you know, and just uh, as it's assumed, like Sam Raimi's a horror guy, right? Uh, really, only has uh, as far as horror movies go. Uh, the two Evil Dead movies. I mean, I'm not even considering Evil Dead or Army of Darkness. It's not, really. yeah. You know, like mm-hmm. A horror movie. Mm-hmm. And then he did do the first episode of uh, of Ash versus Evil Dead. Mm-hmm. You know? um, so in there, it's like, so why are we still considering like Sam Raimi, like this big horror guy? Sean, yes. Question. Sean has I have an answer. In the, in the air. <laughs> Ghost Sean. House. He produces a lot of horror movies. He's still involved very much. In I do feel movie. like I see his name a lot as like presents or like Sam Raimi presents or yeah. uh, Sam Raimi produce executive He's producer. Like to a lot. Of yeah. yeah. Like Wes yeah. Craven. It's yeah. the same kind of vibe. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like the biggest things I think that maybe he, he uh, was a producer on 30 Days of Night. Uh, when that oh, came wow. Out. Yeah. Stay tuned for that. And uh, The Grudge, obviously. And that's right. spun off like yeah. you know, there's a bunch of American right. versions of that. And he's the, the executive producer on that. Um, there was like a period of time, I think, like there were these direct to video movies where uh, Ghost House and I think the eight films to die for were like right. competing. They would buy these movies at film festivals and put them out and like Ghost House Presents. I can't even remember what the titles are, uh, but there was, you know, several years of that. Um, But okay, so um, so he has this reputation in the horror field Uh, horror. You know, I mean, his name is like up there with uh, uh, Wes Craven or something like Mm -hmm. that. Right. Because he's one of the guys who um, was able to move from low budget horror into uh, big budget studio Mm -hmm. movies. And we're saying obviously that the the Spider Man uh, trilogy is the probably the biggest of those. Yes, mm-hmm. right. Mm-hmm. But um, I mean, he had done like a lot of other stuff, like these dramas and comedies, and like I mean, that's what I said for love for of love the game, of the game, yeah, you know? which is a <laughs> real outlier. But I mean, maybe he just Wait, loves what? baseball. Oz Great and Powerful is like what the year after this? It is it, no, it's uh, 2013. It's the it movie was that late? After, yeah, it's the movie after this, but it's not the year after. And this is also the other reason I brought this tonight so i could delay michaela's oz great and powerful <laughs> for, for at least a little while i'm hoping no i I'm hoping that gypsy magic I, helps you know never seen it and i'm happy with that i i hope i never have to see okay, that movie. good well the irony is i have Just seen it precaution. and it's like uh you know once you get to a certain budget level it seems like Anybody could have made that movie. You yeah, know? Exactly. Like, right. Tim Burton and Sam Raimi are almost interchangeable. They you have know, the same career me. trajectory. They have this very similar career trajectory. Of like they've got, they were known for this hyper stylized, very specific sense ability, and then the studios got a hold of them and were like, uh, "Make this big budget CGI fantasy that will be devoid of any of your style." I think it's because obviously, on a smaller budget, when you're in charge of this stuff, you can you can kind of oversee. Everything, the smaller the production is and the lower the budget. When you get with like Oz and Great and Powerful, I don't think his reach is. But you know, why hire him then? I don't, why not do your, why not do your Colin Trevorrow's and your those fucking bullshit people that have no credit? Like, you might as well hire one of those, you know? It's, I just, what's the point? <laughs> maybe, maybe it's to get a crowd like us to go see it. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, that's it. Yeah. I think it's to but get. But I have eyeballs. I've seen the trailer. Like, well, I know I mean, it looks right. nothing yeah, like not, Sam Raimi. It won't work for everybody. Yeah. But maybe that's like the that's hook. They're some, like, yeah. Sam Raimi's doing it. Yeah. <laughs> get in like, here. Like, well, I'm curious. <laughs> right. one, like, he flew pretty close to, like, Oscar area, if I remember, for a simple plan, right? Like, right. I don't remember if he yeah, was yeah. nominated, but. Screenplay, like, maybe? There was, or Billy Bob, or, you know, I think uh, there was, some, like, that movie was 
very well regarded the mm-hmm. year that that came out. And I know that now he's going back into comic books. Uh, he's doing the Doctor Strange uh, sequel. Right. Because Scott okay. Derrickson, uh, who's another horror guy, right. I guess, left the project. He did the, the original Doctor Strange. Right. And, and the Sam creative Raimi's. differences came up, and they're like, let's get Sam Raimi back in this. Yeah, we need a horror guy, apparently, for Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. So okay. there you go. It's going to be as indig- indistinguishable from any other Marvel movie. It won't look anything like a Sam Raimi movie, you I guarantee might it. Well there might right. be one real quick camera zoom in <laughs> that's a, a little jarring, and that'll be it. Like, like in uh, uh, Spider-Man. Spider-Man, when yeah. he's got the operating scene. Yeah, the Doc, or Spider-Man Doc, 2 on Doc, 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 Doc and everything. Yeah, because yeah, that was all yeah, Evil Dead and his horror roots and everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I have a list of Ghost House movies, and it's Jesus. kind of... Okay. <laughs> we got The Grudge, Boogeyman, Grudge 2... Uh, the Messengers. Oh, stay tuned for that. that. The, I hate. <laughs> it was a Kristen Stewart. Yeah, yeah it was. Mm. Uh, Rise, Blood Hunter. Okay, Three Days it. of Night. Uh, yep. Boogeyman. <laughs> all right, here we go. Boogeyman Two. Boogeyman Three. Grudge Three. Drag wow. me to hell. Messenger. Oh, there's a Messengers Two. Oh no. Jesus. Thirty Days of Night. Dark Days. The Possession. Uh, the new oh, Evil Dead. Uh-huh. The remake. The Poltergeist remake. Don't breathe. Uh, oh, wow. The new really? Grudge. Yep. Uh, the Unholy, Don't Breathe 2, Night mm. Books, and Evil Dead Rise. Okay, well, there you go. Yeah, okay, so. it's not terrible. Like, there's yeah, some no, good there's stuff just in there. That, this, there's a run of boogeyman and grudges in wasn't there. That that one, very specific. Wasn't boogeyman that one wasn't Seventh good. Heaven no. dude in that boogeyman movie? Oh, I can't remember. I, I, I saw it. The oldest, the oldest brother from Probably. Seventh Heaven. Yeah, boogeyman boogeyman 3, I think it also was. not good. I have to watch that movie. Also not a good one. I made a great trailer for it. We're not talking about the 80s, the boogeyman. We're talking about like the... Mid-2000s, yeah. New boogeyman. Yeah. Well, all right. Well, so, okay, so he keeps producing movies, and he obviously has like a uh, affinity for horror. Mm-hmm. I remember like he was a guy that, you know, Fangoria would bring in for a guest column of like, you know... Uh, top 10 horror movies to watch around Halloween or whatever. So there's a demand, I guess, by 2009, kind of. Either he's going like, okay, I made a big budget Spider-Man movie that was not well received. And so it's kind of that retreat thing that that sometimes you see filmmakers do after something goes bad. They go, okay, I'm going to go back and give them what they actually want for right me. yeah because it seems like he avoided this for like 20 years that's how you get your credibility back right because like he lost a lot of credibility with spider-man 3 so i'm gonna go back to the people i know that will always be on the convention circuit to see me and make them love me again and that's how i'll get back yeah. in everybody's yeah. good grace i mean it's a good strategy it, and that's <laughs> it a works. idea for like the studio or like anybody funding a project like that to go with it you're just like all right sam raimi gets his audience back then he works with us and brings that audience over to us yeah and from a studio perspective they generally think of horror movies as being like lesser le- le- less brow. lower budget yeah. and like less money to produce so right. they're usually okay with it but be- the idiots but because he's a you know now like studio level a level uh director his movie gets like a decent budget like, right this is a well budgeted yes uh kind of mid-range it feels like i don't know if you looked up what the cost was but Did it's not see? like a, a hun- up, it's not like a marvel movie it's, it's not, not you know that yeah. Yeah. Right, you know right, right, so studios right. considered to be cheap in and in perspective i'm also curious um i mean i know that there was a little bit of a marketing blitz for this movie but i remember you know that. what this uh how much it made at the box office well first would you like to guess the budget 40 million dollars ollie i was gonna say 20 30 okay. it is 30 million dollars wow. all line. right yeah. <laughs> bravo bravo and the box office 15 this Ollie. was a success. Right. I'll give you that. So oh, it's not Ooh, it had a okay. big marketing budget. That? I know that. I'll say 50 I remember. Million. I'm going to say 75. 90 million. Oh, nice. Oh, good job. Very well. Oh, wow. Okay. Even if you All put right. in 20 million in advertising in that thing, that's yeah. still. A- so it was no malignant, is what we're saying. No. no. There okay. was. <laughs> it, I mean, it also won, I think, uh, best, uh, best horror movie at the Saturn Awards, which is a big deal. Yeah. Okay. I remember seeing commercials constantly for this movie i even saw a billboard for it once i think it was you couldn't uh, couldn't escape the advertising for this movie it seemed like okay well i mean there's nothing really at this point in time you know nothing terribly like it um the movie has like uh i mean i don't know why this was the one because he wrote it right was him and movie? ivan Raimi. uh yeah him and ivan Raimi both mm-hmm. wrote it. Yeah. so this was like okay it's sam Raimi writing and directing a horror movie for the first time in forever and it's like okay well then you got to see that mm-hmm. um i guess have you guys ever seen a movie called uh the night of the demon it's also known as curse of the demon 
No. I don't think so, no. Mm-hmm. And it's uh, based on a short story called Casting the Runes. Mm. Okay. And that is basically about a guy who doubts that a Satanist has power, and the guy gives him a uh, the runes on a sheet of paper. Mm-hmm. And it's basically now you own this, and in like seven days or whatever, <laughs> uh, the demon's going to come and get you. And the only way that the guy, you know, is like, at some point you have to give this to somebody Wait. else. <laughs> Which is all like the ring. I was like, so it's the ring? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's a lot of... I it mean, might have been three days. Yeah. I can't remember, well, right. but it was okay. I mean, I'm sure that I mean uh, that idea, I mean, we keep coming across it. Uh, it follows and stuff like that. Yeah. Like, you know, it keeps coming back. Yeah. The thing that's going to haunt you and you can't get rid of, but maybe you give it to someone. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. But I think mm-hmm. that's where that tracks back to. Mm-hmm. It's an M.R. James short what story year? or whatever. The story was written in the early 1900s. The movie was made in the 50s. Mm. Um, it sounds like a Twilight Zone episode. It does. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I know. Black yeah. And white. Yeah. It is yeah. black and white, the movie. Yeah. It's pretty good, actually, if you can track it down. It's uh, depending on if you're in the UK. I think it's Night of the Demon here. It's Curse of the Demon or vice mm-hmm. versa. Um, okay, so this movie kind of takes a little bit from that and then extrapolates on that and builds like a, a plot and characters and all this. And so who's our main character in Drag Me to Hell? Christine Brown. Oh, let me, well, since we mentioned her, let me read the, uh, the tagline on the front of this. Oh, please. I think it's very yeah. good. Christine Brown has a good job, a great boyfriend, and a bright future. But in three days, she's going to hell. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. I, I mean, like it. Yeah, that's, that's not I wrong. Like it. That, that tells you, like, everything. That's yeah. the cold open. That tells you everything that you need to know right, right. now. Just like, oh, okay. It's straight to the point. I like yeah. it. Yeah. All right, she, I mean, yeah, drag me to hell. Yeah. Like, I, you know. There's no confusion that he's going back to horror movies at this point. Like, look, yeah, yeah. I can't, I, I can't make it any clearer. This yeah. is what's going to happen. <laughs> unless, unless I just make a movie called Horror Movie. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. as close as I can get. I, I, would, I think the title's fantastic because it sounds like a '70s drive-in movie, doesn't it? You right, see yeah. it on a double feature with I don't know something it does. else. Yeah, you know? it has the last like blood a, and drag me to hell. Yeah. yeah, there's like a bluntness to it or something. I don't right. know how else to describe it. It's like there's not like a kind of like uh, some kind of artful flourish to it. It's like no, no. There's it, no it's it's this called Drag Me to Hell. Oh, it mean, you watch the movie. Oh, it means that. No. Drag Me to Hell. So I guess we have an expectation that that's, uh, somebody's going Somebody to get dragged to hell or they're going to have to try and right. prevent themselves from getting dragged to hell Ooh. in the movie. Who is this person who's at the center of Drag Me to Hell? Mm-hmm. I mean, Alison Lohman plays uh, Christine Brown. She have you ever seen her in anything before? Matchstick Men. I looked yeah. it up gamer. Fact, unfortunately, I, I feel like I'm stuff. saying that movie way too much on this yeah, podcast. Lately. Yeah, think, but gamer. Yes. I think you're going to Beetlejuice it yourself. Well, yeah, I know. <laughs> Next to gamer. I know. She's in White Oleander as well. Yeah. Oh, really? With yeah. Michelle Pfeiffer. Yeah. OK. I don't know why, but I watched that a lot for some reason. <laughs> She's I don't know only why. done like three things since this movie. Like she's basically stopped acting. Hmm. Hmm. So that's interesting. Mm-hmm. Um well, I mean, this movie's traumatic for her. Yeah. Maybe, because, yeah. I mean, I guess that's the thing that you have to kind of, I suppose as an actor, expect. I'm sure Bruce Campbell at some point comes in and talks to the actor who's going to be in a Sam Raimi movie and says, like, just so you know. Hey, like, kid. I know, yeah, yeah. I know you want this job, but <laughs> you're going to get the shit beat out of you. And, and this is what you will be known for for the rest of your life. Yeah, I, yeah. I, it's unfortunate it didn't work out that way for her, right? <laughs> like, she should be hitting the convention circuit, honestly. I think people I think would could. be into it. You know, I think yeah. she could make a decent Who knows, in a $90 million dollar movie, that maybe this is what she's going to be known mm-hmm. for. Yeah. Life. Like, oh, you're the girl from Drag Me to Hell. Um, okay, so uh, give us a setup here. Who is Christine Brown, played by Allison Lohman in the movie? She is a, what do they say, a loan officer at a bank mm-hmm. uh, who's gunning for a big promotion, as mm-hmm. we are showed in the movie. Sure. Um, and she's got uh, men gaslighting her through the entire movie, it yeah. feels like. Yep. Um, there's financial drama in this fin- movie. <laughs> yeah, financial. Yeah. There is. It's like there's Ghost. A, there's a, <laughs> you know what? Yeah. There you go. No, right I was there. waiting for you guys to say this this uh, whole fucking yeah, movie. There, there was like, so many parts of this movie that were so much like Ghost. <laughs> yeah, she's getting... Patrick swayze by a Tony Goldwyn in this movie. It's like yes. the same kind of setup. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. So she's she finds herself, I don't know, at a crossroads. She's trying to get the promotion, yeah. but she's, she's competing with a douche that doesn't deserve it. Right. Yeah. And she's yeah. trying to make herself like stand up for her stuff, make mm-hmm. uh, uh, stand up for herself more yeah. and be more assertive. Mm-hmm. Um, make the tough decisions. Mm-hmm. Make, yeah, as, as we're as told. Her boss says. Yeah, to yeah. make the tough decisions. Um, and it's David Paymer as her boss. Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, okay, you got David Paymer. I Pleasantly surprised to see him. Yeah. I was like, yeah. he's perfectly cast in this. I, yeah. I always like him. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, but she and she's got uh, she's got a nice like it's the front said she's got a nice boyfriend. Justin Long is in this. Mm-hmm. Um, Jeepers Creepers. He's the star he's, of Jeepers. Right, okay. and he's also mm-hmm. a man. Oh, Colin. Uh, <laughs> yeah. He, oh, that, wow. You took me back with that. Show. I forgot those commercials existed for a while. I was a time capsule. Uh, yeah. Um, and also, depend, how do you guys feel about Justin Long personally? I like I him. It, okay. Honestly, I know him yeah. from like two things. I don't have a strong opinion either way. He's okay. he's serviceable. Yeah, he I mean, gets the I've job done. In, he got, he in this, yeah. I liked him in this, and yeah. I liked him in Jeepers Creepers. He's so. in a couple things. I really like the movie Going the Distance with mm-hmm. Drew Barrymore. I think I had that movie. Weren't they like really yeah. dating when they made yeah. the movie? Yeah. So, Did yeah. they do yeah. Fever? No, that was Jimmy Fallon. That was Sorry. Fever Pitch. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, Going no. the Distance is one of the more tolerable of the romantic comedies. Is it? Because yeah. it feels like it comes from it's that funny. era of romantic comedies. Yeah, Again, it's like funny. the he 2000s. Was, he was, it had like a big comedy run in the 2000s. Oh, yeah. Was he in Scott Pilgrim? No, I don't no. think so. No, but he was, he was in Dodgeball like, and not, uh, I'm uh, accepted. 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 Yeah. He kind of ran okay. with that group a little mm-hmm. bit. Yeah. yeah. He'd show up and. He's been in a lot Zach of stuff. Zach and Mary make a porno. Was he in there? <sighs> I feel like. I've oh, he was. Because he was the boyfriend of Superman. Oh, uh, Brandon Roth. Yes. That's right. The replacement, yeah, right, right. replacement yeah. Superman. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Colin just shuddered. That you shudder. couldn't see it, but Colin shuddered. <laughs> you shuddered like you, somebody threw up bugs in your face. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, yeah. I have feelings about this movie. Cat. This movie's um, disgusting. <laughs> this movie Which, like, is it's on brand for Sam Raimi, but like when it has a higher budget and it's more realistic, it's more gross you yeah. know like the the grossness in the evil dead movies is comedic because it's so like cheaply done you know yeah, yeah. Mm. and it's a little um, cartoony and everything it's actually it goes on me... for so long yeah right. this actually made me gag yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's really gross well, this is, we I... did watch the unrated version of this yeah. movie tonight we but forgot we to mention that I, it plays the same way that I remember yeah. maybe there's a little difference with the uh, the cat thing that happens uh, <laughs> that feels like an <laughs> that's where that's yeah. where they chime maybe. in on the unrated <laughs> stuff <laughs> really I could be wrong but yeah because everything Everything else God. I remember is being in there. It's a very the movie is very heavy on uh, the the sound effects. My God, I mean he just plays Oscar for stuff. that Foley artist oh, man, for right? Real. But, but yeah. it's like he's not. You know, I think a lot of uh, filmmakers. You know, it's like you're trying to do stuff that's you know within the realm of reality. Sam Raimi doesn't give a fuck. No, Sam Raimi's like I'm just gonna crank these things yeah. up and have the most goofiest sound. He accents. Uh, I mean, part of the movie is uh, that uh, uh, this old gypsy woman comes in and uh, you know she's asking for an extension on her loan. Yes. And there's a scene where she takes her, uh, you know, her fake false teeth out. She's and, gross from the beginning. Because yeah. she's she's coughing, coughing up gross fluids. In, oh, yeah. I mean, so we God. see the phlegm in her handkerchief. Mm-hmm. You know. We hear the sound of her hacking. There's the sound of her like taking. Yeah. Everything's wet. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's like just accentuated. Yeah. To, to a so crazy gross. level. I mean, I get it. He's trying to say like, you know, that, you know, when when uh, Christine is presented with this woman, it's yes. like this woman's extremely off putting. Yes. You know, especially in yeah. the environment she is like the the uh, her being in this very. uh Clean. Well, um, I forgot. The it's word. a bank. It's very hygienic. It's a bank. Yeah, hygienic. Yeah, like it's sterile. Very, it's like a hospital. It's yeah, just sterile. Yeah. It's sterile. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's a very sterile environment. She's bringing all her stuff into this. And, yeah, yeah. And she's got one uh, like cataract eye or the something sickness like took that. Her eye. Yeah, <laughs> as she says. This is Lauren Raver playing this part. Mm. I'm, I I don't know her from anything else, but she's mm. great in this role. Yeah, yes. she went the Mrs. distance. Ganish. Yeah, <laughs> it played part by her, and then later by a dummy. But you know, hey, yeah. hey. Um, but she comes in to ask for an extension on her loan, and then it becomes like this question that's given to her, which is kind of unfair. Her boss basically says, "Well, you're up for this promotion, so it's up to you." whether you give her an extension on this loan or not. She's had two extensions before on her mortgage, mm-hmm. so it's your call. And mm-hmm. there comes the whole movie's central conflict. That's the yeah. fulcrum point of the <laughs> whole yeah, movie. Where, yeah. where does the universe branch yeah. off to? What yeah. decision are you going to make? Mm-hmm. Right, because it's like in the bank's best interest to fork, and it's like, well, you know, as Justin Long's character says, it's like, well, you don't pay your mortgage, uh, you know, mm-hmm. and then you lose your house. Yeah, And but, this is the third time you haven't paid like this is the third time going on paying your mortgage has lasted so long you're about to be foreclosed on so like it's a it's a repeated problem you know it's not like this is the first time she's had to ask for an extension you know but at the same time it's like you know it the the woman makes it sound like you know this is my house and if you kick me out of my house 
I don't have it. I mean, this right. is like well, she's very sympathetic. Where she says, "I'm a very proud woman." I'm sorry, I'm doing the yeah. accent. Yeah. It's just, I'm just doing what she said. But she's like, she gets down. She's like, "I've never begged in my life." But well, I will her, beg you now. her boss also like puts his fingers on the scales a little bit by telling her, mm. like, "Well, you yes. know, banks make a lot of money on foreclosures." Mm. So like, he's influencing her in the way he wants her to go, yes. which mm. is. Capitalism! Yay! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. There's Fuck a lot your of people, feelings! Yeah. Good. A lot of people trying to manipulate her mm-hmm. in this movie. Yeah, because I think that's the thing that it's also highlighting is that she has the sin of ambition, I suppose, or something like that. Mm-hmm. It's like that, you know, desire to to become, I guess, you know, what, the, the uh, climb the corporate ladder. Right. She right. makes that decision, which, uh, you know... I, I liked it, the fact that the at the end of the movie, she does come around to admit, like, you know, I mean, this is what she ultimately comes to is like, I could have, you know, right. granted her an extension. Right, when she like, said that, I was like, I'm like, lady, you ain't fooling nobody. Like, right. we, yeah, <laughs> we know. But this is this is like such a weird. This is what's really interesting about this movie to me is that. I don't think this character deserves anything that happens to her in this movie. Really? No. No. Because she is put in an impossible position of choosing between bettering her own life or like, you know, or taking pity on this woman. Right. Mm -hmm. And like, so no matter what, she's going to lose no matter what she picks. And I don't think she deserves to literally get dragged to hell for wanting to prove that she deserves the promotion. Right. Yes. I think I think at this point. She doesn't deserve it. You know because what I later mean? Later on, because I, I was almost but like. But she only does other stuff later on where you might think, ah, eh, she kind of deserves she, this. All she wants is this. to be promoted based on merit. Right. Yeah. Which is how promotion should fucking work. Right. Yeah. And it, but the, the scales are not balanced because her boss is playing favorites with mm-hmm. her other coworker. So she's doing what she has to do to get ahead. Yeah. And so that means basically violating some. Moral she doesn't code. want to do this, but right. this is the yeah. position but her boss does. is putting her in. Yeah. Yes. But I guess that's the thing that she's ultimately personally judged for you know by uh the lamia i suppose yes. this is where this yeah. uh comes in because later i did get the impression that like oh wow she's like the villain of the movie but it's because she's you know riding on like outside the bounds of you know like right. these are f- stressors e- that- e- but also <laughs> extraneous circumstances i think in, when you say you saw her as the villain of the movie that's why like I, think- I never once thought of her as being no, a villain in this movie. Once. Not After once. She killed her cat. She was pushed to to limits that she was not comfortable with because she was trying to save her own fucking life. Yeah, I mean, she did just get whipped around a room. Yeah, like, yeah, I, don't, yeah, yeah. I don't know what I know, that feels I know, like. I know. I know. She's you, like she's the consummate been, victim in this movie. Have you ever been chased movie? by a goat shaped shadow <laughs> that no, beats I you up? Yeah. No, no. So I mean, you don't I, know what you would I, do. I think so because um I, I think that's what you have to think of because I personally didn't think she had been stressed enough to murder a cat. That's just right. me. Right, yeah, yeah. But this, so, this I whole also movie takes around a room. Yeah. This whole movie takes place over like three days. Yeah. yeah All this stuff happens right. in like three days. Yeah. We have to remember as for the I'm actions sorry. that she takes. Yeah. The just, assault alone is I mean, enough. I was gonna say, just her coming out of the bank and being assaulted by the old woman Speaking in the car. Of which, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that <laughs> enough would traumatize me for life. Mm-hmm. Right. But is the old woman right there? I guess this is. Is she right? No, is, no, no. This she's is not. Crazy old woman her? freaking no. the crazy fuck out. Woman. Well, she doesn't have the right to attack a person. I'm just saying. But it doesn't like get her her house been... back. Emotionally, she feels right. Well, the this is uh, this, this old that... lady's on a vengeance journey. Yeah. yeah. Well, she. Well, obviously. I mean, yeah, but it doesn't like, like it doesn't it doesn't make the old lady's life any better by doing this. She doesn't get her house back. No. But she so, thought she was going to because she thought that she was going to live and that basically the, the Christine was going to come to her begging for her life, in which case she would exchange her life for her house. Mm-hmm. I think that's what she thought was going to happen, but then that, mm-hmm. that throws another mm-hmm. uh, monkey in the wrench. But that's but that's still, like, that. that's a horrible thing to do to somebody. Yeah. Like, to get, horrible. Curse them? Yes! Well, yeah. <laughs> She's the fucking villain, Colin! <laughs> you know, you could just pay your mortgage. That's, you know, that's look, an option look what this here. this capitalist society has done to you, Michaela. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, she chose to go curse and drag you to hell or out when she she could have gone to another bank and been like, hey, I need a loan to cover my ass for this mortgage. I suppose she does lean on the evil. That yeah. Is, uh, yes, yeah. 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 That is, that is her <laughs> default mode, say, it seems. Uh, maybe, maybe not default mode, but she, like, she goes there quick. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Um, so, or the, she could have moved in with her daughter. That was an option, but she literally said she was too proud to do that. Yeah. So right, her yeah. own pride is her own yeah. fucking pride. Which I'm sorry, but her pride doesn't seem to come into play with all the other weird shit she does. Yeah. I know. Like she, you figure if you have magic at your fingertips, like you can actually like make some of the stuff happen for yourself 
uh, on yeah. your own. She you can't think. make money I appear think. with these magic right? powers. Yeah. Oh, she might get punished for that. Yeah. I don't know how these rules work. I don't know how it works either. So but basically, she might, yeah, yeah. She's, she might get punished for assaulting someone in their car. Yeah. How well, about by that? the law, yeah. maybe not by. <laughs> And that's where it like you know. takes it to well, the like powers a, that be are okay with assault. Mm-hmm. Okay, I don't think they're going to come down and be like, "Stop the police!" Will, but yeah. you know, whatever she prays to, what the fuck is she down. praying to? I don't know. <laughs> gypsy, demon goats, yeah, you know, gypsy uh, uh, demons or something like that. She the the thing in the garage. So basically, she assaults her in the garage, and uh, so she can gain a personal object from her. That she can put a. I curse think assaulting on. is like really glossing over this. this. Is yeah, a hell of a fight scene. This yeah. is this is one of the weirdest sequences I have. But seen one of the best. But the, but the start of it with the handkerchief going around the back of the car and the camera turning oh, with it, and then great. she's in the that back seat. Because I was want they they got me. I was that watching was that genius. handkerchief yeah. the whole time. I'm yeah. like, Woo! Yeah. yeah, there's a that was good. The old yeah. woman's creepy sitting in the in the dark in the back seat. Good reveal. And then there's a fight scene that is a Sam Raimi like extendo scene where it's gross as hell. There's teeth being knocked. Maniacal laughing. Uh, There's they're gnawing. There is gum. Toothless gnawing yeah. on people's faces. Oh, and, and, can you imagine if, somebody, like, if I just came up to you and went ah on the bottom like, of your face? Yeah. And she was like spewing phlegm the entire yeah. time. I mean, yeah, it's disgusting. The well, ruler, she didn't know the her ruler down her throat makes oh, yeah, my she throat hurt. Her throat with a ruler. Oh, yeah. Oh, and it's a- like it's like turned on its side, so like the edges would definitely like get your throat. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. yeah. There, there's a and stapler. Wh- yeah. And why it's- is this old lady so strong? Yeah, she's, she's got like super. Why strength. is she so she's strong? She's very angry. <laughs> I'm sure, like fifty years ago, she she asked for it yeah. at some point. I'm guessing. I'm sure she's, she's accumulated powers over this time. All right. Well, let me ask you this about this scene then. Okay. Like, uh, so I mean, obviously, we're, we're we know that it's a horror movie. Is this a horror? Is it a horror scene or a comedy scene? It's hor- it was horrifying to me. It was horrifying. Yeah. I was. There are some funny elements, but I would say it is a horror scene. Yeah, yeah. It's like horror slapstick. Yeah, little, yeah. Which is what well, Sam Raimi does, I mean, right? Yeah, like yeah, that's his brand. That's, just, that's his shtick. But right? this is more like of a tone, a more horrifying movie than say like Evil Dead Two. Yes. Oh, yeah. I would say yeah. So. yeah. I think I was so. More horrified. Yeah. Like, There's a lot of body horror in this movie. A lot. There is. Yeah. You're saying like uh, fluids uh, being Fluid, squished yeah. around. Yeah. Trauma. Well, and they also shoot the. I mean, the she was like scary, and especially when like she goes down below the car. She's like, "I beat you, you bitch." Yeah. <laughs> Which was funny, but she goes down below the car and it waits a beat, and then she when she comes up with the brick. Whatever sound design they had on that, that that was fucking creepy. They're just mm-hmm. like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. like yeah. it was good. Like, it's creepy. It always sounds very like Tim Burton-y, but like yeah. a little bit darker than Tim Burton. Yeah. Even you know, like, it sounded like she was coming from hell. Or Danny Elfman, I guess I should say. You know, mm-hmm. I'm surprised yeah. Danny Elfman didn't do the music. But I know, yeah, I'm, I'm me too. too. Yeah. Christopher Young, the other dependable uh, horror movie. Bling, 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 bling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> that constantly. Um. So in the scene, we have the curses placed upon Christine. Uh, I remember when I saw uh, the the theatrical trailers for this movie, I actually thought they were remaking. Anybody see a movie called Thinner? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thinner yeah. is how it's pronounced. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Because I'm like, didn't I see the trailer for this? Yes. Like, oh, this is a new thing. But yeah, yeah. yeah. gypsies again. Don't, yeah. don't That is offend. a movie where nothing happens. He, the guy gets thinner. Yeah, that that's yeah. the movie. That's it. You, you guys have yeah. seen it. Like, I, I I seriously yeah. thought about putting that on my list before, and yeah. then I was like, wait, no, nothing yeah. happens. Literally, in that nothing movie. happens. Nothing no, happens sure in that a, movie. I'm sure there's a mockbuster called like Gaunt or something that. Yeah. Be, that's probably <laughs> way better than that. It's a better title though, actually. Gaunt. Yeah, Gaunt's a good yeah. title yeah. for something. Mm-hmm. Gaunt. It's a great word. Ooh. I like that. Uh, copyright. Mm-hmm. Uh, copyright. Twenty twenty one. Sign every show. Gaunt. Can you copyright the word Gaunt? I am now. All right. Copyrighted title. Sure. Why not? All right. Sure. But yeah, would you put the curse on him and thinner? She literally just pointed at him and goes, Thinner, like three yeah. times, and then, like, that's it. And, I don't like, think you're she like, has, like, a personal item in there. No, she just, she's like, points. Yeah. yeah. She's just like, you. Yeah. Spell casting has become more complicated. Yeah. <laughs> technology has come in and everything. You I know. would really love to have that curse put on me. <laughs> well, she has, uh, yeah, like, this. Just thinner here. Yeah, yeah, just right here. Yeah. 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 Well, that's the problem in Thinner. Well, okay, it's a Stephen yeah. King book in a movie, but yeah. Uh, so, um, the. Uh, so then I guess like the, the first stage of this is you have to get your character to believe that they're possessed. 
So how does that, and we also know because the helpful opening credits tell us that this curse takes three days to manifest itself. Right. On the first day, you're going to hear the wind, and then the second day, the Lamia is going to like mm-hmm. pester you, and then the third day, you know, it's going <laughs> well, to pester did, you. Didn't she say Excuse something me. about three Excuse shames, me. too? Wasn't there three shames, like physical shame and something else and something? Because like there, in the first day, there's all the talk about like, oh, you used to be heavy, didn't you? You used to be fat. And then like... Uh, there was there was like the three shame. they were talking about the shames. Shame comes up a lot. Shame in this comes movie. up a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I think that was it. actually why she cursed her. It wasn't because she didn't, you know, uh give her the loan. It right. was because when she was, you know, she the proud her. woman woman begging, mm-hmm. you know, for her and she is sh- publicly shamed as Christine's like, "Get off me." And you know, calls what was she, she sub- should be. What she was she sub- be? put that there? What was she supposed to do in this situation? Right, yeah. as she should be. The woman is like grabbing at her. Yeah. Like I would call security. She was too. Like, like wiping her mouth on her skirt. Yeah, like it yeah. was disgusting. This yeah. is like this weird like meeting of the old world and the new. And there's like certain you know social <laughs> boundaries that you don't cross. She's yeah, crossing them. And, and it's security like, was very gentle with her. Oh, yeah. They didn't even touch her until it was. They yeah. literally just stood there and like let it play out. And then they're like, okay. Time Time to go, ma'am. It's like, yeah. okay, like you're lucky the cops and you're at a bank. You can't fuck around at a bank, man. They'll call it. They'll no. hit that red button under the counter real quick on you. You yeah. know, yeah. Holly, can you speak to this? Yeah, Having been true. someone who works at a bank? It's very Yeah, when, yeah. The, yeah. when the gypsy came in and cursed you, how did yeah. that, yeah. did they get her out there real quick? Um, Not as fast as I would have liked, yeah. but uh, okay. yeah. No, yeah. there was some hustle. Did, 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 they, rough, did they rough her up a bit? Yeah, right? I did. Yeah. <laughs> did you tell them, you're like, here's a 20, rough her up a little bit yeah. so she doesn't come back? Yeah. Oh, I'm so glad I don't work at a bank anymore. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Fewer gypsy curses Fewer. that way, right? Not working at a bank. I moved from a bank to financial aid. Yeah. I feel like in and of itself. It is. I feel like I'm so anxious if I worked at a bank, I'd always have like one finger on that red button you know i'd always be ready for it you know so, yeah something uh, especially now because you have to go into a bank wearing a mask whereas before it's like you can't even yeah, have sunglasses know, right, on yeah, 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 yeah. now yeah. i don't yeah. really always have that finger ready yeah, on that red like, button God damn it, and it, makes yeah. it harder for everybody. you don't know mm-hmm. robbery or gypsy curse i mean either one's uh mm-hmm. you're taking your chance mm-hmm. yeah, you robbery know? or the cold our robbery happened on my day off Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, I looked out. <laughs> they didn't want to fuck with you. They yeah. were like, oh, let's wait till yeah, she's let's off. Let's yeah. go on a Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, so she. So how do we uh, uh, get the um, impression that she's being haunted or whatever? How what happens? Well, she's hearing things. She's seeing things, as you do when you're cursed and haunted. Um, Go- Goat Feratu comes up her stairs. Creeping up. Oh, yeah. It looks she, like a little I mean, nose for uh, yeah. but it was like, oh, yeah. Yeah. that's a really good yeah. description. Yeah. <laughs> it is pretty cool. It's like, it's only seen as, uh, I assume, a CGI like uh, shadow on the yeah. wall or yeah. something like that. And um, it's like the afternoon, which like, there's something really unsettling about being haunted in like, at, like two o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah, you know? right? like, for sure. It reminds me of being uh, being home when I was younger and when my parents went there, which was like me and one other brother, and we were very young. And yeah. it's broad daylight, but you hear a noise you don't know in a big house, and you're just like, yeah yep. yeah and and at some point like the specter of the old woman like shows up and vomits uh uh well i think th- it's after the fly like uh the fly scene oh, this, oh. Was, Death oh. fly. this was gross she does, too. yeah because there wait before we get to that there's another she is attacked again in her home by the spirit right you know, soon after the first attack she kind of gets like thrown around she does she gets thrown around a little bit um and oh we didn't mention after she gets attacked by the old woman in the, the parking garage she sees the psychic she does is that right after that she yeah the psychic or it's right it, after that okay that's right after that. yeah she gets yeah. her palm read by ram joss who's like a mystic who um I like the interplay between like Justin Long and him. Like yeah. mm-hmm. Justin Long's like he doesn't believe in any of this. They're and discussing philosophy or arguing kind of a little bit of philosophy. Yeah, but and... this guy's actually read all this stuff, yeah. right? You know, so yeah. it's like, okay, you know. And then he's like, you know, you've he's been like, cursed. <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's, it's one of those things where the psychic like is like, Ugh, I don't want to have anything to do with this. It's such a powerful uh demonic force. Mm-hmm. But he's of course gonna become like the uh, central sounding board, I guess, throughout <laughs> yes. the rest of the movie. Yeah. It's like, well, we could try this. This, this guy's a, a lot to blame for this movie as well. He's part of the problem here. Because well, he's I, not upfront and honest about the situation and it causes more destruction than it could if he was just honest to begin with. You I know? mean ye- well, um, I think we'll get to that. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, but he's also like, I think he knows he's not working with science here. He he, he really is just like, but he's, w- he's withholding really important information True. for, et- for what reason? True. Well, well, do you think she's, well, yeah. Well, no, I mean, we can talk about it, yeah. I guess. Right? Do you we'll, think she's we'll- more likely to give it to someone before she goes through everything or after? 
Well, we're saying, I guess, to set it up, yes. that, that uh, he does not tell her. So basically, like the Lamia, this demon thing that's yeah. been summoned, is going to come after the person who owns the, the the button off of her coat. Yes. And she owns it. Doesn't matter if she burns it or whatever. The she's slit, he literally owner. says, you are the owner who is cursed. It's not the object who's cursed. He tells her that. Yeah. And so what he doesn't <laughs> tell her until later on when she's very desperate, it's like, well the owner of the object will be cursed. Mm -hmm. And so you could hand this off to somebody else and make right. a gift of it. Right. Af so yeah. After she's murdered her cat and her boyfriend's paid $10,000, he tells this. Yeah, she murders the cat because uh, that's like a, maybe we can make a sacrifice to appease but the I, uh, I will, demon. I will say like, if, if we were given this choice right now, I'd be like, okay, a human will literally lose their life and be dragged to hell. Or we could try the $10,000 and killing an animal. Yeah. It does seem like I would try those options first. It's just that it's the fact that he straight up lied to her is the problem. Is that is it's the fact that he said it doesn't matter who owns the button, you're the one who's cursed, and then later says the complete opposite. That's the well, problem. Well, he does say that he would be an accomplice to it, mm -hmm. and that's his decision. Mm -hmm. He's like, I don't. I mean, he, that could. That's all and up I, to him. He's like, I don't want to be an accomplice. And I, so I would call I'm him saying that her. you couldn't destroy the button, but I don't know if he said that you couldn't give it away. He said, he said, you're the owner of it. Right. The owner and, is cursed. And later he says that yeah. if she formally gives it to someone, they are now the mm -hmm. owner. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I, I think at the time but he could have said that. No, right I know. Up front. He could have like, said that earlier. Because like, that's, that's what the ring is. Like we we're saying, right? The ring is you give it to somebody else. It's their problem. It follows you. Give it to somebody else. Can you imagine if we watched the ring and they're like, you got to kill a cat first. Then you got to pay $10,000. <laughs> Actually, you could just copy this videotape. We'd be like, what the fuck? <laughs> Why didn't you just say that to begin with? You know, it is, like, it's a moral dilemma. Yeah, yeah but I, I think that's it, right? It's a moral dilemma because it's ultimately at the point where he first sees her, it's her responsibility. She's the one who offended the woman and got yes. cursed. Mm -hmm. It's like because of this choice that you made, right? And we're talking about like, yeah, hey, you're going to go to hell. And there's still at this point, we have options. There's things that we can maybe do to try and appease the spirit right. or get it away. Right. Because for all I know, this could, this, could be, this could be easier than we think it is. Yeah. Like, but he knows. But he, that, well, but you could give it to somebody else. Off of? But he's going like I said, he's not worried. I don't think he knows he's working with science. He's yeah. like, this could be. I, I was going to say, I think also like because at one point he gives her the book and he's like, oh, we can try these things. I think he is just like maybe while she was gone, he was he found he something else and right. was like, oh, maybe she can just give it away. This is why you don't put your life in the hands of charlatans and scam artists, you know, because you're going to end up killing your cat and going $10,000 in debt but when you could have just handed off a button to somebody. But they're the only people who know anything about this stuff, well, I suppose, unless you do your own research. There's always you get a that. second yeah. opinion, yeah. Colin. You go to another psychic and say, hey, what do you know about this? Yeah. Scam yeah, artists. Yeah. See how they yeah. feel. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's a series of escalating events that basically happen to kind of drive her out of her mind. Mm -hmm. Um in and, and the meantime, there's the whole, you know, stress of the promotion is coming. Uh, there's a scene that takes place. So uh, stressful, it makes you want to vomit. Yeah, or Ooh. bleed from or your nose uh, in a geyser <laughs> on your boss. And like, oh, it's like. And they're unexpected. apparently moved past it with no problem. Yeah. Like, the boss yeah, never nobody, mentioned why nobody that. checks on why her. Why is there not uh, hey. About yesterday, <laughs> you like internally you bled okay? all over me. Yeah, because yeah. that's a lot of blood. That's a, it was a hilarious. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's where you know, this is the line. Yeah, it's the line that Sam Raimi's uh, treading here. Where it's like, yeah, it's disgusting, but it's also funny. Yeah, <laughs> that there's that much blood coming out of a person just hosing down. Day yeah, get in my mouth. Yeah. Is there any in my mouth? <laughs> So good. That's pretty um, funny. <laughs> so as this stuff escalates, there's also another stressor, which is she's, uh, you know, apparently she hasn't known Justin Long's character for very a long. Year. A They've year. Yeah. A year. They've been dating a year, a year. is what yes. he says. And the there's parents. like a class uh, struggle uh, going on with his parents that oh, yeah. maybe she's not going to be good enough. Right. You know, mm -hmm. she's a, a farm girl. Like that is this movie's got from. everything, Colin. Misogyny, <laughs> capitalism, classism. It's yeah, all there. It's all there. Right, you know, everything. You'd probably want. some xenophobia with with Romani people. I'm sure is is couched in this as well. <laughs> but it's got everything. But yeah, she's like from the wrong side of the tracks because she's from a farm. She was oh, once that's a, some real Miss, elitist shit. Miss pork chop or something. Pork queen. Uh, pork the queen. pork queen. Yes, she was which, the pork queen. Which pork which chop. comes back at the end <laughs> in a funny way. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, they're like, well, you know, for our son or whatever. But I like the scene that, that, that finally we go to their house and there is this like, 
you know, because there's all this tension, which yeah. you don't expect in this kind of... There is, like, an actual love story happening here. Like, the Justin Long character is a pretty straight-up dude, you know? Yeah. Uh, I mean, he loves her and mm-hmm. is willing to do, like, okay, things are going fucking crazy, but I am willing to go all in on this for you, even though I don't understand it. You right. Know? Yeah, and that make is a leap some, of faith. That's love. But he takes her to his uh, parents' house for a dinner, and that's where, you know, it's like there's this tension because you're like, this is going to go horrible. They're mm-hmm. going to hate her. But there's a moment where she, like, confesses to them that, like, her mom was an alcoholic, and that's, like, an in with the Justin Long's mother, and yes. they have, like, a bonding moment. And you're like, it's no, nice. this is all going to work out. It yeah. feels nice. <laughs> yeah. This is, Colin, this is what 50% of Gilmore Girls is. Oh, oh boy. this whole scene. This whole scene, I, I was like, this is Gilmore, Gilmore Girls. Girls. <laughs> Tense family thing. dinners with, like, East Coast snooty blue bloods. Yep. That's what all of what and Gilmore Girls is. Demons, 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 demons behind doors? Yeah. Yeah. No, Girls? it's just a lot of terse discussion. <laughs> Yeah. Damn, I will not so. be watching it. <laughs> but it, there were demons. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, there is a demon here who uh, only she can hear. Yeah. So it kind of makes it seem like she's crazy. Yes. <laughs> you know, kinda, like yeah. yes. which right. Justin Long. I mean, he is a very dedicated person. But he should have jumped him in. Like she's been through some trauma. If he hasn't already yeah. explained it to her, it's like she's been through some trauma. Uh, a gypsy attack. Like her. literally yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. it is. Yeah. So yeah. Well, he was advising that, like, we probably shouldn't go to this uh, dinner, but, you know, it's like, Mm -hmm. well, we're going to make the best of it. And then it becomes like a horrible, uh, everything's blown. And uh, then I think at that point, she's like, okay, you know, because uh, was that where she's going to get some? Yeah, that's a that's a Ash line, yeah, yeah, right? That's yeah. written Come into the movie. That is, yeah that that would only sound right if Bruce Campbell was saying it. Yeah, yeah. there's a centerpiece scene, I believe, that takes place before this, where uh, uh, this is where this was six thousand dollars that we were talking about that she spends uh, is to uh, the woman. There's a, a, a medium who dealt with the Lamia before in, a, in like a pre-credit sequence. Right, from the cold open. And so this is like a big fucking to-do. Because if you're going to do a seance scene in a movie, you know, there's been so many of them, you have to go big. And Sam Raimi yes. does go big yes, in this does. scene. What was the most <laughs> unexpected moment in this scene? Bitch goat. <laughs> have you not seen Evil Dead 2? I knew that was coming. As soon as that goat came out, I was like, that as as goat's going like, to talk. That, that yeah. is directly walked over from Evil Dead 2 yeah. into this movie. That head jumped still, off the wall and came over here. It still made me giggle. Yeah. It's, yeah. <laughs> I mean, because it's hilarious. There's a, a goat, a talking evil goat the puppet yeah. that shows up. You remember the horse from Prom Night 2? The I have rocking seen horse Night that too. got all horny and veiny and shit. Oh, I forgot about that. You remember that? That's yeah. what it kind of reminded me of. Where it's just, it's just like crazy. Oh my god, I forgot about that. I blocked that. There. Yeah, I mean, most people would. But yeah, this yeah this scene like he does go big. Uh, a little detriment to the last like twenty minutes of the movie, but this is a, a spectacular scene. Like this is, mm-hmm. a, um, I mean, this is what I would want if I went and saw Medium. I love yeah. that Lamia calls her a filthy pork queen. <laughs> yeah, 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 I was like, yes, I love that. <laughs> yeah, and you think I'd take your cat and it actually spits up the dead cat? Yeah. And like, I want your and soul. I, I just love this set piece, the old creepy ballroom. Like, I just yeah, love it. this it's house so is cool. incredible. Is this yeah. really, house really in Pasadena? It I want to go see like it. It's you know, it's a museum or yeah, something. Yeah, it's with, so you know, cool. Probably that they got access to, but it's grand. It's great. Marble yeah. and really high ceilings and pillars everywhere. And yeah. You know, like you're pulling energies from everywhere mm-hmm. in a place like this. That's it's right. like built for it. It That's looks like it something says, right? you'd see in a Mexican soap opera, right? Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. It's definitely. Got the yeah. Carvings, right, and like the cult the carvings around. Yeah. The, yeah, I'm like, who built this and did all these frescoes and the paintings and all this stuff? Right. People used to care, Colin, because yeah. being a medium apparently back then was a lucrative business that it's, could it result could in. It could be lucrative now still. Like she's getting ten grand, uh, you know, exercise know. demons yeah. and shit. Teresa Caputo is still. Maybe she lives. Oh, in yeah, don't don't even. So she's got something on the back of her head too. Her hair. That's why <laughs> Shit, that explains it. Okay. It's, it's really, oh, I don't want to spoil it. It's, it's, it's really, uh, you know what, back there telling her what to say. Right? That's how she communes with the dead. It's doing the readings, yeah. Oh, no. Okay. I like, I, you All know right. what? Let's spread this conspiracy theory. I, I like, see, these are the good ones. I like yeah. it. Okay. How's she going to disprove it? Is she going to show us the back right. of her she head? Shave her head. Yeah, you know. Benefit like, for everybody. Yeah. Well, 
Look yeah. her up, guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This. Uh, I mean, we also have like. There's a little bit of an Evil Dead thing here with a guy like uh, suspended in air, dancing yes. around, Shooting and all like that sort of stuff. Yeah. Other, yeah. yeah. Other people are uh, possessed by this thing. Um, they're Igor. I forgot his name, but he feels like an Igor. Yeah. 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 The assistant who showed up out of nowhere. Yeah. He but this possessed. doesn't work. That's the problem with mm-hmm. it. That uh, her they, last words before the. I mean, eventually the stress of this whole thing. She's like, I couldn't. Mm-hmm. And then she dies. Yeah. It's like, oh, oh, she said I couldn't. Yeah. yeah, this is not over. So it's still, even though they exp- exercise it from the the seance, it's yes. still gonna haunt her. So then Ram Joss gives her the like, well, okay, you could make a gift of this. So then she has to make a decision of who she's going to condemn to hell. Yeah, and so there's like the scene where she's in a diner, like looking at all these. Pa- patrons, mm-hmm. you know, going like, well, who and am I going to give this? We scouting? are all yelling at the TV at this point, like, <laughs> or at least I am. Yeah. But like, the uh, the obvious answer is give it to your boss or give it to Stu. Give it to somebody that fucking deserves it. Yeah, because this is- like, passing off on a stranger seems so just like out of left field. Yeah, yeah. This is the I think this is the part where. We know where we are. I don't think the movie does because I think, like you said, like we should be at the point like we know her boss and Stu have yeah, been Yeah, why is the character behind us? Like, if she's trying to yeah. think of someone to do it to, she eventually gets there, Yeah, but the audience is screaming it, and she eventually gets to it, so it kind of feels like it should have happened. Yeah, because Stu, quicker. Stu yeah. comes yeah. over to the diner and then, like, has this tearful, you know, thing, and then she's like, okay, well, then I'm. you don't deserve it. Who does deserve it? Then she This decides, is the financial drama we were talking about. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, but... I think you're right, because narratively, it's like the movie is losing some kind of momentum at yes. this point. I think, you know, when people say they have a problem with the ending of this movie, I think, like, it's because of the gear shifting that's happening here. Yes. Because there's also another thing that's happened that any astute movie watcher is aware of, and that's that, you know, early in the movie, uh, Chekhov's uh, coin yes. is put into an envelope. And yes. So then, because your boyfriend's a coin nerd, right? Yeah. And this is, yeah, like you said, this is also happening right now. And you should, like, we know. Is she's it got, obvious? Yeah. yeah it's, oh, it's, it's obvious the, as hell. They get okay. the, yeah. the envelopes get mixed up. Right. This seems very obvious. Yeah. Like we should all be like, well, obviously the coins got switched, so she's doing this. And that's, like you said, that's that's what kind of brings us down because I know this is all for naught. Right. Because like, I know there's going to be a reveal of it. That's the right. problem. It's, a, it's yeah. a problem when you're five steps ahead of the movie. Yeah. You yeah. Know? If, like yeah. I said, because there was a certain point where the scarf comes back and starts attacking her. I'm like, and like I yelled out in the middle of the movie. I'm like, it feels like we're going backwards. Yeah. Like, yeah. We shouldn't be we're going back. We're delaying backwards. getting yeah. there. And it's like, why? Why are you delaying getting there? It's like, we already know like yeah. all the right. pieces are in right. place here. Do yeah. we think this is a script problem or an editing problem? I think it's a script problem. I think it's an editing thing because just because of that scarf scene mostly. I think... Cause like, why well, is that? Yeah. Why is that happening? Yeah, even yeah, shouldn't be at that point. That's I written think, into. I mean, I assume they yeah. they wrote it. Yeah, and they cut well, yeah. It, and it's but, like, yeah. why didn't you cut that, it out? Well, is that yeah. What you're yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, just your, cut it is, entirely. Is your last offense against yeah. stuff yeah. like this. Yeah. So I think it ends up being cut an fat. editing problem. Yeah. Yes, because other stuff was probably you know written in and all that stuff. Yeah. Stuff from the script that's not in this movie. And I think it comes down to the editing at this point. Right. Because and everything felt like it was all on the same track up until this point. So why is it derailing now? Yeah. It was going. Yeah. 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 I think he thinks that he's pulled the wool over your eyes. I think so. But unfortunately, it doesn't work. We've yeah. all seen movie. We know that the... Right. We know the classic the mix-up. Yeah. yeah. Right. So she dis- determines that the uh, the person to gift it to is the old woman who cursed her and, you know, clarifies it. Can I make a gift to the dead? Yes, you can. So then she's got to dig up uh, the Sam Raimi graveyard, uh, which is, you know, all... <laughs> yeah. Uh, crazy and Tim Burtony and all gothic, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so she can dig up the old woman's body and give her the curse. Tallest headstones I've ever seen in my life. They're all at least three feet high, yeah. if not taller. Like the shortest ones are like it three looks feet like, high. Like yeah, Louisiana, mo- like mausoleum. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's great gothic and it looks, you know, looks grand. Yeah. And yeah, it looks great. All, it's just kind of like, like I was going to dig up a gypsy. That's the kind of graveyard I think she's yeah. married in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's like, take it back, you bitch, and shoves it down into her mouth at some point. Or hand, and she, whatever. this poor actress, has covered in mud she's so wet i just imagine she had to be freezing to freezing. death yeah this yeah. looks oh. awful yeah it didn't look uh pleasant but i suppose mm. this way you get from a sam that's why we enjoy these movies because right. it looks like they went through hell to make them right yes. um but we there's nothing even in the editing or the score to really suggest or to throw us off that like uh, she uh, has yeah. actually accomplished the mission you know right. it's like right. the, even the movie knows that like yeah we know you know that right you know that <laughs> she didn't actually 
Yeah, that's the coin. Right. Yeah. Not the button. Yeah. And so she meets. Uh, so the next morning, it's like uh, she's going to get the promotion. She's going to go off on. A- like birds are chirping. Her hair mm-hmm. is all styled and nice. She's wearing bright colors. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She's meeting Everything Justin beautiful. Long yep. at They're the train station. They're going to Santa Barbara. Yeah. Yep. He's going to be great. He's got a ring. Everything. She bought a new coat. You know, they almost had me. <laughs> I, I, you know, like I was like, I was almost like. Oh fuck! Is this movie just gonna like wrap it up all neatly? Because I was like, that's not very Sam Raimi. (laughs) (laughs) You you were like, what? They're not gonna have a tragic ending to this movie? What a bummer! Well, I was. I actually (laughs) thought it was. We'll get to it. We'll get to it. Okay. Yeah. It turns out there's a tragic ending to this movie. Yeah. (laughs) Very much so. Did not see it coming. Because Justin Long's like, oh yeah, you gave me your button on accident. And then boom. But I thought it was going to be him is what I thought was going to happen. Oh. I thought he would he would still take oh. him. But well, I guess I, he didn't have the formal discussion, right? You got to have the I am the owner now or whatever, right? Yeah. right. She yeah. left it in his car, but didn't give yeah. it to yeah. him. Yeah. Right, which I think they're, maybe they could have fixed that if when she's looking for the envelopes, like she finds them both and she's like, oh yeah, this one's yours. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then at the end, she's like, oh, and maybe she thinks it's still coming for her, but then it like grabs him yeah like they could have yeah they, would that have been better i don't well let's i well let's put it this way i saw all of this coming maybe it could have been i also was only because thinking, it'd be shot it would be surprising i it thought the train be. was a good freak out the train was like a nice layer to it that she falls yeah. down on the train tracks and you think oh maybe she's just gonna hit by gonna get hit by the train right. and then at the last second the it the hell mouth opens up and swallows her you know yeah. i don't think i would have liked it better if it had been him no, we want her huh. to die at this point, I think. Oh, because I think She's it, going to jail if it's him, to, right? Yeah, it's yeah. like, it, ultimately, it's her decision. She comes to right. realize it was her decision that put her in that position. Yeah. yeah. The whole movie is guilt, right? She's, yeah. It's the guilt of... Yeah, I'm not saying she deserves it, but he definitely didn't deserve it. <laughs> right, you know, right. right. That, yeah. True. Yeah. that would be... That would be pretty Especially crazy. cruel. Yeah. But, yeah, it, yeah, but it would have got her morally off the hook if she gave it to him without knowing it. She would have been traumatized for the rest of her well, life. Yeah. 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 But again, and and going would... to jail honestly, for his murder, probably. Honestly, I thought the button was going to get sewed back onto the coat and given to someone. That's where I thought it was going. Like, we'd, she, we'd end That's up That's some point. Stephen King we, shit if I ever heard it. Someone wearing, yeah. I and now it's a haunted coat. Ooh, <laughs> yeah. <passed> yeah. <laughs> it goes to a dry cleaner would, and gets I passed to a bunch of people. Now, yeah. the coat doing that with its, like, <laughs> empty arms. I'm a haunted I've coat. I've seen that movie. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. In Fabric. Yeah. It's about I'm, a haunted dress. Oh, oh, yes. it's, oh it's, it's not weird. as cool as it sounds. Is it gothically haunted? Is it like It's a Daniel Day-Lewis movie. How haunted do you think No, no, no. Not the Phantom Thread. Oh. In Fabric. That is a haunted dress. It's an yeah. A twenty four movie about a haunted uh, dress. It's but it's still it's an it's an A twenty four movie. So it's, <laughs> it's a lot of talking from the makers yeah. of Barbarian Sound Studio. Yeah. If you know that one, so um, okay, so I mean, I guess that gets us to the end of the movie. But did we want to go back? Was there something else uh, that we were going to talk about? Moral conflict or something? I can't remember. Oh no, I don't remember. Nope, she gets dragged to hell. Oh, yeah. is she a villain at this point or no? Oh, we're, oh, I mean, that's what we talked about at the beginning. But. Right. Um, only because, I mean, I guess I was seeing her as like an antagonist rather than a protagonist. I mean, I get that the movie is walking like a very fine line. Mm-hmm. So I guess I was seeing like a lot of her, like, you know, I'm going to go and give this curse back to, yes, the woman who cursed me. But the woman who cursed me cursed me because I was, you know... But doesn't that make her a hero? Wrong. That she's not passing it off to an innocent person? All these well, are that's valid like saying, questions, I'm a hero I because yeah. I didn't murder Holly. That's like... Yeah, but when I mean, it comes yeah. down to your own survival, <laughs> like, yeah, that does make you a hero. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, I, I mean, maybe we did say that there's a funeral scene. She finds out that the old lady... She does go back... Oh, yeah. Begging for forgiveness, but the old lady died. Right. That and she gets not on the, again. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. So she can't. I guess that's the comp, the plot complication. Mm-hmm. That, sure. like, I still maintain I never saw her as a villain. Yeah, I thought not the, once. Old, the old lady was a villain. Stu was a villain. Yeah. Her she a was, villain. She she's was never a villain. A villain. Yeah. We should stop saying that. I don't, she, she's not a villain. But she, she was pushed to extremes because of yes. her circumstances. Yeah. Like, okay. She was never a villain. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. I think it's uh, maybe. Villain is. Okay. I'll take back villain. I'm still going to use antagonist. I, I don't agree with that. Thing. I know, I know, but, <laughs> yeah. but that's okay. But that's just a point yeah. of view thing. Um, I think it may be the movie because it feels like, uh, I don't know, it feels like a weird cheat where she's like, yeah, I guess you can give it back to the dead. Like, it doesn't feel like a, it doesn't feel satisfying, well, I, mean, I guess. I guess that's why it can't, really. Right, I mean, right. The movie, I guess that's the movie why it is. figures yeah. out a way to like, well, you did it. 
But, so the yeah. movie's going to get Because isn't the whole thing the other person has to accept it? So, like, obviously this isn't going to work because she can't accept it. Right. And I, well, that's what I felt yeah. watching this. Yeah. And that's why it didn't feel. It was all, Even though yeah. I knew the it was button wasn't a, there. It was, it was just excuse, a vehicle. It was, it was an excuse vehicle, to have yeah. a cool cemetery scene, right? I mean, like, that's yeah. why this yeah. is in yeah. there, that's, right? That's very like, true. Like, we really need some more gross stuff with this old lady. What yeah. can we do? That's very true. Yeah. yeah. Like, thunder and lightning and muddy grave. Like, yeah. it, it'll and be classic, you know? It has to give you that kind of psych out. Like, that there's there's some redemption that she can get out of it right. it's just by passing the thing off but then that's mm-hmm. not accepting the uh, I, I yeah. guess like do, so do you guys see the people in the ring or in like it follows as being vic- as being villains because they pass it off to someone again not villains. uninvolved I think we got too harsh with villains yeah um I think yeah I mean once you once you hand it off to somebody I think that's why they cut we were saying uh we were talking about on our ring episode the American remake did cut out a scene where they, because uh, it's in the deleted mm-hmm. features on the disc, where they just drop it off at a at a blockbuster, which is what I would for sure, sure do. Yeah, but that, I mean that morally compromises them. Yeah. I guess like the way it is right now, it's like, well, we're going to make you know, dad watch it. Dad's going to have to make somebody else watch it, and then right. so at some point, yes, you are going to have to make that kind of, uh, you know. Yeah, you're you're right, but that's somebody. what I'm saying. Do you think that that makes someone like an antagonist then, putting think, their own survival ahead of someone else's? Because that's what you're doing. Well, yeah, if you're just choosing somebody and like you, I mean, you're going to suffer. So I don't. No, have you're to. assuming they're going to pass it on to somebody else, just like the ring, and it follows. I think the ring thing. You're supposed to give them the. This is how you get out of it. Too. Yeah, you give them the instructions. Right. It, yeah, well, that's, that's what that's what it again, follows. You're those morally too, like you know. Yeah. Well, if this person doesn't, are you not culpable then? If they just give it to somebody and don't tell them, mm-hmm. then I is think, it weaponized? I you think know? it's you once know it's out it of your hands. Me, it's out of your hands. I think what I think it is for me. I think it's the bank thing. I think it's back to the financial shit where she waits so long to the end of the movie to be like, I could have got her the loan. Like I felt like I already knew that. I, yeah, and I feel like she, I don't know. I f- well, she There's always knew weird. that. It, yeah. That's not what it was about. Yeah. It was she knew she could give it to her. It was. The choice was, do I want this promotion or not? Or do the right thing. Yeah. That's the other. That's, but the, that's that, the other. Thing. Yeah. I can either. It was never right a question thing. of, can I get the yeah. loan or not? And she right. may have got the promotion even if she had done the right thing. I mean, we don't know. We don't know. That's but like I said, the boss is tipping yeah. the scales I by agree. saying, well, yeah. banks yeah. make yeah. a lot of money by foreclosing on homes. So. Yep. So mm-hmm. interesting. Mm-hmm. I know. It's an interesting. Uh, it's an interesting. Yeah. It's an interesting. Something it's an interesting movie. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But she, she gets dragged to hell <laughs> <laughs> with her eyes let's all not, bugging out. Right, and yeah, that it's was like good. creepy. Yeah. Let's not forget thing. this movie. She gets dragged to hell at the end. Yeah. <laughs> Boom! Cut have, to credits. Cut to, yeah. yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. That's how you do it. Like if you're going to wait for that at the end, great. Literally yeah. clapped. There was a, yep. there was Fantastic. a lot of menthol stick crying in this movie, though. You guys notice how red everybody's fucking eyes and eyelids were in this movie when they're crying. Yeah. Menthol sticks ever. Justin Long, especially at that last yeah. shot, I was like, "Oh boy, they really got you good with that one." It's yeah. Yeah. it's coming out hard for the folks at home who don't know what the menthol st- yeah. menthol stick is. You rub it on your eyelids, and it makes your like the menthol goes up into your eyes and makes you tear up. And that's how you get the tears that come down the middle of your eyelids. <laughs> um, because when you cry naturally, it doesn't come down the middle. It comes down the side. Yeah. See, uh, last time yeah. I cried, it definitely came down the middle, <laughs> but it's not like, <laughs> it did for real. Yes, yes well, it really yeah. did. Because but, I, I noticed were you that staring at yourself in the mirror, <laughs> but that's how people are able to deliver a monologue while they're crying in a movie. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because like, it's literally just a menthol stick right, and you making your eyes water. You You're not sobbing and right. like heaving, when you, have to deliver you know, a monologue, but you can't get into that mental space and you have to deliver that monologue 20 times to get the right shot yeah Yeah, they just like but you can always tell because their eyelids like the bottom ones especially because they usually rub it on your bottom eyelid um, it's real red and puffy and then sometimes their eyes will get really bloodshot yeah Mm -hmm. and especially if someone's just like talking like this but yet they're crying for sure menthol Mm -hmm. stick like for sure it's an actor or a crutch it's a tool that I mean models do it too and so that's how I learned about it there are actors who actually get them themselves to cry so yeah. you're saying that the actors who cry for real better actors i'm just saying you can stuff. usually yeah. if someone's for real crying their uh, eyes are not red if they cry so. for real they just had more trauma in their life yeah. that's no. yeah. <laughs> so they're easily yeah. they can access better that. actors yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah okay well yeah. Yeah. okay so that's drag to hell we are going to tell you whether or not you should watch drag to hell but first drag of all we're going to, to drag, hell. god damn it you're absolutely right 
I'm sorry, should, I said we're drag them to hell. Him. Yeah, drag me to hell. Um, but first, we're gonna read some of your mail. In order to do that, we're gonna have to summon our mailman, and his name is Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. How many times do you think Igor's been dragged to hell? I'm betting it's a bunch. <laughs> I think he, like, when we're not recording, that's where he's hanging out. Yeah, you know? he just, yeah, like, yeah. He just, he just hitches a ride there. It does smell yeah. like sulfur in here. Right he now. drags you, people. He's a frequent flyer down there, so? yeah. It's, I feel like it's very slow. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I'm not saying it's, it's hell. Good. It's got to be torturous, <laughs> right? Yeah. I think, yeah. He, I think he tries to coax people, but no one ever goes. Yeah. <laughs> well, we want to let you know how you can join this interactive portion of our show. All you got to do is follow along on our social media, such as Facebook, Facebook.com slash Saturday Freak Show, or Twitter at Sat Freak Show. Our non-social media, you can email us directly. <laughs> Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. <laughs> or you can follow along on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. That's the only way we talk. We just email each other. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, about tonight's movie, Drag Me to Hell. Pat Hetfield writes in and says, I love Drag Me to Hell. Some of the comedy is, in my mind, inappropriately over the top. And there's one <laughs> unfortunate CGI scene which would have been better served if it was done practically. Oh, you know, I know. The oh, we didn't even talk about the stuff, anvil. But... Yeah, it was the oh, anvil. Oh, the fu- the... there's a fucking anvil. Like, Listen, listeners, oh. if you've ever seen an anvil in real life, tell us about where and when you saw it. I'm, I'm it... guessing Renaissance Fair. And was yeah. it tied to a pulley to a ceiling yeah. ready to fall In a on garage? People? Yeah. yeah. Well, literally. Like, I have nowhere else to store this. This is literally a Roadrunner and Coyote cartoon. Yeah. Have you ever seen, uh, remember Twister where they go into the barn and the, yeah. all the shop rooms are like, who are these people? Yeah. Like, that's what I felt. Like, what are you doing? That's the way Sam Raimi feels everybody's great it's a horror movie garage the only time True. i've ever seen an anvil is like a blacksmith at a re- reenactment yeah. like right. mid- like a renaissance yeah. fair yeah or something yeah that's yeah, like yeah but there's like yeah. a scene like she ends up the old woman ghost puts her like whole hand, arm whole arm in allison loman's uh mouth and then the anvil squishes her head and her eyeballs pop out oh, and hit yeah. allison loman in the face and it's like all cg and it it's looks bad. terrible yeah. and it, again it's a scene like if you cut that out of the movie you lose nothing you wouldn't have lost yeah you, yeah you really could have that feels like an add-on to an unrated part but i did enjoy an arm in the mouth that whole thing <laughs> freaky and was i was just too focused on the anvil <laughs> well especially point. she cuts the rope with an ice skate yeah yeah so it's so cartoony like it's just yeah, they really could have yeah. just taken that scene out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Uh, well, Pat says, overall, I really enjoyed Sam Raimi's Return to Horror, even appreciating the blatant Evil Dead callbacks, and I can't wait for his return to the genre. Uh, Amos Martinez asks, this is an Evil Dead movie, true or false? I mean, that goat is directly from Evil Dead, so yes. It, I could see it being the same universe for sure. This sure. Se- honestly, I could see this being like a season of Ash versus Evil Dead. It seems like something they I would mean, deal with. The car's there, so. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. right. The we Delta discussed, Olds. Yeah. We yeah. discussed yeah. the car is probably the thing yeah. that's causing all these problems in Sam, Ra- yeah. Yeah. Sam Raimi's movie. Could definitely be a shared universe. Yeah. 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 All right. Uh, Kryptonian Orphan says, uh, Drag Me to Hell is classic Raimi. It has creepy characters, cheesy, awesome, practical effects, over-the-top protagonists, and charming, misunderstood villains. I love this movie, especially the ending, bleak as it is. Uh, great choice, gang. Perfect movie for the freak show. Thanks. Sometimes bleak is like, when it's not overly depressing, it's say, really good. Say, yeah, because that's yeah. pretty bleak. Yeah. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I brought it back up. Well, Why would you bring that up? I mean, that whole I'm movie in a good was bleak, right now. you know? Like, <laughs> <What> the <laughs> movie had no upswing ever, so... Well, India Murphy writes in and says, If I recall, this whole movie is an unsubtle metaphor for eating disorders, bulimia in particular. I can that, see that. That's part of it. Because mm-hmm. there is, like, a whole thing where I guess she used to be heavier, and then mm-hmm. she lost weight, and then she, every time we see her in, like, a uh, stressful, stressful situation... She's... But it's she, like, she's like stress cream. eats, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wow. But I don't know if I see that it is, as a... That is a really subtle, not, dark undertone that I did not pick yeah. up. Well, it's, I don't think it's as much as... I don't think well, a whole she's movie trying to metaphor. purge no. this thing from her. Yeah, you it's, know? it's a guilt. The whole mm-hmm. thing's a guilt thing. Uh, Travis Legler says, I like this movie when it came out. I kept waiting for Bruce Campbell to show up somewhere, but Sam's Delta 88 did. I found the goat scene really creepy, but it put a smile on my face. The ending always kind of bugged me. I'm not that big a fan of it. However, overall, this is a creepy, fun movie. Perfect for this time of year. Mm, definitely. Yeah, yeah. It has good fall atmosphere. It does. Yeah. Some good yeah. Even though the middling. opening credits, like the music, everything, it just got me all in the spooky, spooky mood. <laughs> and that cemetery scene, that was the <laughs> ultimate spooky. Yeah. Will this yeah. be sustained next week? Stay tuned. <laughs> 
Uh, about last week's movie, we watched uh, Malignant. Peter Gatt says he had an interesting twist, but by the time it re- was revealed, I had lost interest and was watching on autopilot. Oh, and the lead female cop reminded me of Wanda Sykes. Yeah. She's definitely like she, poor man's Wanda yeah, Sykes, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 I looked her up, but I couldn't, uh, I didn't recognize like, a lot of the other stuff. I'd never seen met. her before, yeah. Um, the previous week, we watched Ring or Ring You. Uh, Grant Parrish says, okay, so I listened to the podcast and I have seen the American remake, but why is there a videotape? I understand that the plot needs there to be a videotape. I'm just not sure how the plot accounts for the tape please and thank you yeah no i that's a I question never i would like to know that. that's a question i would like to know as well yeah plot hole yeah colin <laughs> uh since you've uh seen all 38 of these movies did they ever explain it yeah well i thought the american remake Didn't like the tries american to remake try blatantly to? do it that she projects these uh visions even when because uh, it's all about like the little girl's psychic right, right? or yeah, she can yeah. project her thoughts in the American one, they make it explicit that she's like burning uh, artwork into the walls of, you know, like her, her bedroom. Okay. Uh, I think both of them have the idea that the original videotape is found at the cabin that's built right over her burial place, the well where she's in. Yeah. So she has somehow in that first one, they say they recorded a channel that wasn't supposed to be there. They were okay. supposed to be right, record right, a video right, game, right, but right. they rec- or not a video, a baseball game, and they recorded something else. And so right. it's a psychic okay. projection in, because she's right okay, below okay, that makes right. Sense. And in Ringu, there we go. they were like, okay. there's a channel that only comes in down on that, that certain yeah, place yeah, yeah. Okay. where they found it. Okay, okay so they did, they did do it. Okay. So there she's like infiltrated this frequency and got she it. Has her only own, because she has her own. They're, they're right over because right. they're right there. <laughs> she, has her own, she has her own cable access show. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Oh yeah. my God, I want that skit. Yeah. How has SNL or even Mad TV not done that yet, right? I want It's like Wayne's World, but it's tobacco. Yeah. Projecting her I don't know. I know they did a Demon Wayne for a version <laughs> yeah. at one point. Uh, well, we were also talking on the Ring episode about the uh, multitude of sequels and kind of branching sequels and that they have kind of their own, uh, like, choose your own adventure yeah. mm-hmm. uh, pathway through them. And Mark Harrison says, this is getting into the Italian series level of sequel confusion. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because no. yeah. 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 I mean, he's talking true. about, like, demons or something. Yeah. There's like 16 of those. Well, yeah, and the they demons all, and yeah. uh, House of the Blind Dead. And uh, isn't that one, like, isn't there some? Well, demons specifically they have movies that aren't demons right. movies that are renamed as and a zombie. sequel but the actual se- yeah zombies yeah, yeah, zombies, yeah. One yeah. zombies the other one sure. as well yeah. yes. okay so uh, thank you all very much for writing them we greatly appreciate it yes, thank um, and thanks for listening now we're going to go around the table and tell you what we oh, thought <gasps> You're not going first. Michaela. Uh, rude. <laughs> Michaela's going rude. first. Rude. <laughs> um, I think this movie has a lot of interesting things going for it. I mean, obviously, Sam Raimi returning to the genre uh, is always going to draw an audience, and it's always a good... I love seeing a director return to their genre. I wish they never would have left in the first place. If it was up to me, you make a good horror movie, that's what you're doing for the rest of your life. But Marvel will come in and scoop you up now after one movie, so... Um, I like that there is this story of this woman operating under misogyny, under capitalism, under elitism. Like, she just can't get a break. She's getting it from all sides. And all she wants is to be rewarded for doing a good job Mm -hmm. at her work. And, like, man, some of those conversations in this first act of the movie, I was like, this is too real. I've I've heard this before. Like, you just do this one thing, you'll get a promotion. It's all all stick and no carry, you know? Like, that this is corporate life. Unfortunately, I feel like it's never going to change, and this is how it's always been. And it's just, like, that's the horrifying part to me. It's like, wow, this is reality, and there's no way I can escape this, you know? The rest was fun. This made me feel bad. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Exactly. And I think it's, like, I don't think she deserved anything that happened during this movie. Like, it's, it's, which is a really interesting position to take as a filmmaker, right? It's really interesting to challenge your audience to be like, you're going to watch this person that you're going to sympathize with a lot, go through some serious shit, and guess what? That's it. That's the story. Yeah. She goes through some shit and she gets she literally gets dragged to hell. Dragged Have fun with it. You know, that's a ballsy stance to take. Mm-hmm. So I respect that a lot. I'm a little on the fence because this movie is just so fucking gross. Like, <laughs> you know, yeah. like it's yeah. just we so even, gross. Uh, we barely mentioned it, the the throwing up of bugs on her face. Yeah. Face. She had this poor actress had maggots in her mouth. Like, and that's 
Like that Ugh, there's, pile. There's yeah. a bloody pussy eye in her cake. Yeah. Like, and yeah. Oh, a fly goes in her mouth. It's like so that's gross, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, gross. Gross. yeah. That was, yeah, that was so gross. That, we, we had problems with the movie, but when that fly thing was happening, I was just like, nope. Uh, no, 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 no. Oh, yeah. There's yeah. an uh, audible so reaction. Gross. Yes. Uh, in the room. Uh, little things, Colin. And yeah. like, don't like animal trauma. The cat right. stuff was like, that's so unnecessary. It's so inconsequential to the movie, you know? Like, I don't. It, it's just a misdirect. That's all it is. So I don't like care for that. But it's an original property by a horror legend. I feel like you got to recommend it based on that, right? Like we didn't know what we had in 2009. I would love for a movie like this to come out now. You know, like um, I think I, I just Sam Raimi needs to stop doing the Oz great and powerful shit. I don't care about his Doctor Strange movie because I really don't feel like it's going to be Sam Raimi's Doctor Strange. You know, um, but. This movie has a lot going for it. I think it's definitely worth a watch. I think that it's sadly seems a little lost to the sands of time. I feel like I feel like it has its small people be like, oh, yeah, I think I saw that. And that's like it. You know, I I mean, I had seen this before. I saw it when it came out. And I remembered almost none of it. So mm-hmm. um, but I think I would definitely recommend it because there's enough good stuff going here. If you've seen the Evil Deads, you kind of know what to expect. Mm-hmm. If you don't like the Evil Dead movies, maybe don't watch it because you probably won't like this either. Mm-hmm. But I recommend it. Holly, what do you think? Yeah, um, there's there's a lot of good stuff in this. There's some things that I didn't care for. Um, it is really fucking disgusting, and I I did not. I mean, sometimes I like gross in these. Like you know, we we watched some Peter Jackson. That was pretty disgusting. Oh, yeah. Um, but, Obviously, I feel like this was on the same level as that. Yeah, Those were it, both was. it was. It was gross. Um, yeah, man, it was really gross. Maybe not as sustained as that movie. Yeah, is, yeah, but, yeah. But man, it was gross. Um, but it just slaps you in the face with it in this movie. Like <laughs> it does. Slaps you in the face with grossness. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, they're, they could have shaved off a lot of this movie, I think. It, it did feel like... It was going at a pretty good clip there for a while, and then it got towards the weird ending, second ending stuff, and I was like, mm, they could have shaved off a lot of this. Um, I, I, I'm very curious if... Nor- like standard audiences would have been fooled by the the coin button swap. I always wonder too. I'm very curious because I instantly think of like other friends that I have that they go to the movies just for like I just want to go to the movies. They don't sit and analyze things. So I wonder if this would if this would have worked on what some a of blissful them. life that must be <laughs> to just like not analyze a movie, just sit and right, take it in and then that. be like, that was a movie I experienced and then right. never think about it again. When right. Did they, when did they invent the button where you can literally just, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Just shut Pretty off pictures. I mean, yeah. I, w- I will say smoking weed makes you dumber so that you're more surprised by the twist. So that's why I like <laughs> I it. Cause I'm like, Oh shit. Yeah. 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 Just do that for now. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, there's, there's a lot of details that like, me personally, and I feel like everyone at this table here probably could have we could have done without some of the the scenes that they added at the end there. Um, but yeah, although I had a lot of fun with this movie, it's it's a good time. Um, it's it's definitely spooky. There's there was definitely some scenes that actually got me with the, with the jump scares, mm. which anymore is hard to do. And so it was a pretty effective movie. I, I like the I like the mythology um of the lamia i think that was really cool i mean yeah yeah we've seen it before like the you know give the gift and you give the curse away that kind of thing um but i always i always like a good demon story i don't know i dug it yeah i thought it was a fun movie could have shaved off a little bit was a little gross didn't love the middle part of the end there but i did like the ending where she actually gets dragged to hell i know that's Mm -hmm. that's um controversial with some people but i dug it i was into it so yeah i would recommend drag me to hell colin what'd you think yeah, I mean, I think this is one of the strongest horror movies of the two thousand of that decade, uh, and I think that's because it's so. I like movies that don't like have a sequel like built into them, yeah. right? Like, I don't need yeah. to see another one. Like, I just like the story. Uh, yeah, I mean, it has elements of you know, Night of the Demon or Casting the Runes or whatever. You guys should check that out. It's yeah. a pretty good you know older movie uh, that goes after the same kind of thing, but. Um, <clears throat> I do wonder if Allison Lohman was miscast. I'm not sure. There's something, and maybe it's just my own personal reaction to her. There's something where she needs to be, I don't know, like calibrated up a notch. This could be the direction also. I don't know. It, it Especially in that like last third of the movie, it's just not, 
She is a calmer actress. Yeah, she is yeah. because there's there's the whole thing with like the cat. You know, it's like well, we you, you, we have a cat, and she the way she plays it off, it's yeah, like yeah. it's that a was joke. A really, that was weird. It just doesn't. Yeah. And I'm like, is it her? Is it Sam Raimi? Is it? I just I don't know. Well, Colin, I think like if you if you've watched Ash versus Evil Dead, Dana De Lorenzo is basically like in a lot of these same positions as this character, and I think she's a really good She's especially bad, compared yeah, to her yeah, i feel like if yeah, you would cast someone like a dana I, yeah, de lorenzo you know, you know now that you say that i'm yeah. like yeah I she, imagine her, her in this movie yeah, right it makes she, she's it, yeah. so effortlessly charming yeah. too and pulls so off maybe the horror stuff really well yeah i don't yeah. know I mean, yeah and i also think like uh the music i mean i know i'm like i'm giving criticisms all this stuff but the, the music is like very uh it the mu- the music is making a serious horror movie and like this tragic you know romance kind of thing but that is at odds with Sam Raimi's tone. Sam Raimi is a guy who's sitting back there like a little kid going, <laughs> look at, I'm going to splash on this. Look at, they're going to be grossed out by this. And it worked like crazy. That's part of his, like you go to see a Sam Raimi horror movie, you're expecting that it's going to gross you out. It's yeah. like, it's not like brutality gore. It's like, but he knows, you know, yeah. that you don't like uh, things coming out of noses and out of mouths and pus and all this other mm-hmm. stuff. Mm-hmm. And he leans into it with a glee, you know, that I think is what makes the Sam Raimi stamp. And that mm-hmm. and all of his crazy camera work when people are getting thrown around and, you know, everything's vibrating and shaking. And uh, just this kind of like, he puts the accelerator down and you go from like zero to 60 and a, a cut, you know, um, all of this makes it extremely entertaining, uh, mm-hmm. to watch. I really loved watching all of this movie. Uh, I think in the end, there's some missteps, you know, which kind of keep it away from being like an all timer. But yeah. I think, you know, as time goes on and other movies kind of fall away, uh, that you're like, well, that one wasn't, was it better than drag me to hell? And you're like, no, drag me to hell actually does stand out in my mind mm-hmm. as, uh, like a really good, um, a really good movie, really good horror movie, uh, a highlight of Sam Raimi's filmography to me and of that decade. So I'm going to say it's one of the best uh, horror movies of the uh, 2000s. I would definitely recommend it. Mm-hmm. Sean, what do you think? Thank you. Um, I agree with all of you. No. <laughs> <laughs> all right, next week. <laughs> next, next week. Um, no, uh, this was my first time watching it tonight, and this movie is a hell of a lot of fun. Uh uh, Holly said, she's like, it's a little gross. I'm like, give me the gross. Like, <laughs> yeah. I, you said it. The glee in which he puts this stuff on screen, I like that. Because, I, you know, I think we all share that glee at some point. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, it's, um, it's a fun story. Um, it's, I mean, it's scary at times. Like, the, I mean, the, the fight scene in the garage and everything. Like, there's... A lot to love about this movie. Um, I think, you know, we talked about we talked about what we talked about, how it's got some problems and everything, maybe some miscasting. That back end sure does kind of it feels like we're going backwards, like I said. But I mean this is a good this is a fun time. This yeah. is good. Um it is it's creepy, it's gross, uh it's perfect perfect for the spooky season. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, if you haven't seen this, I think you have to see it. Like I yeah. think it's it's pretty damn great. So uh entertain the hell out of me. I recommend it. Drag me to hell. That's a good movie. Yeah. All right, I think that's Freak Show approved. I think so. That's good. All right. Well, we're carrying on the spooky season. Uh, Next week, it's going to be... Who's who's picking next week? Michaela! I should have said just Colin, just to be like, fuck! Everybody's like pointing, but you yell it out. Yeah, Michaela! Michaela, What are we watching next week? We are in the spooky season. It's spooky season, and we haven't done a werewolf movie in a long time. So we're going to cross a big one off the list with Ginger Snaps. Nice! Ah, nice. All right. Ginger Snaps next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. We hope you'll join us. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark.